with that out of the way, WWE NXT TakeOver War Games 2020, December 6th, 2020. The opener is, in fact, Tony Storm and Candice LeRae and Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez versus Shotzi Blackheart and Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai and Ember Moon. Now, before we even start reviewing the match, let's just go back a little while and look at how this all began. It was Ember Moon kept getting beat up by the heels, yes. made to look like a dumbass. Yes. And she finally recruits some help, her friend Tony Storm. Tony Storm then immediately turns on her. Yes. Making her look like more of a dumbass. Yeah, fact. So then they arrange this whole team to take on the bad guys, the bad girls, the bad gals, the bad ladies. There's a ladder match to determine who gets the advantage. The baby faces win. This leads to anybody with a rational brain saying, well, what can they do? How can we solve this problem? I had an idea. My idea obviously involved an injury to one of the baby faces, giving the advantage to the heels. And then finally, the baby face returns at the end with a big old fucking giant cannon that shoots her into the ring. And she runs wild and everything... It's great. Lance had the idea that you turn somebody on the babyface team, which I thought was a dumb fucking idea because they just turned somebody, but still, that would work. Would you like to explain, Vinny, the solution they came up with to solve the problem of the babyfaces having the advantage in this match? I will do my best. But before I do that, I want to go back even farther than you do, Brian. Because as much as you mentioned Ember Moon looking like a geek going into this, and, uh... Everyone else, uh, let's not forget this whole mess started when Shotzi Blackheart's toy tank was run over by a truck. True. And she so. was reduced to tears. Yes. Rhea Ripley is in this match because she's on an epic losing streak and has nothing better to do. Eos arrives in this match. I don't know why. I guess she was just desperate to, book to, to get booked on the pay-per-view. Could have no more baby faces. That's why. Yes, they ran out of na names. So, I we'll get into details. But the long and the short of this match is... Physically, athletically, very impressive, very aggressive, very dangerous, very violent, great action. Mentally, psychologically, it is a crying shame I wasted all my hate on the anti-impact <laughs> rant on Thursday night. Because this, frankly, I will be honest, this deserves more hatred than Impact in 2020. In fact, when I pointed out this was like the worst psychology I've ever seen in a pro wrestling match, people pointed out, you're forgetting this and this and this happened on Impact once. And I said, God damn it, you're right. But this is the worst psychology I've seen in NXT in forever, in WWE booking in forever, and outside of Impact, I don't know how long. It made zero sense. It made less than zero sense. Well, Vinny, to answer my own question, which you didn't answer, I'm going to tell you all how they got around the problem of the baby faces having the advantage. They got around it by the baby faces having the advantage through the whole fucking match. That's how they did, yes, yes. They literally did a match. I'll let you get into the details here in a minute. They literally did a match where the baby face and the heel started, which, by the way, the wrestling in that period wasn't very good, to be honest here. I know that'll make people mad, but it wasn't. Then another baby face came in. It was two on one advantage baby faces. The heel starts fighting back and beating up both baby faces. Yes, yes. Then another heel comes in. Right? Have mm -hmm. I already screwed up? I feel like Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett had no fucking idea what was going on. He could not wrap his head around the fact that the baby faces had the advantage. He kept talking about how the time is going to expire and we're going to have another heel in. But that wasn't what was going to happen. It was another baby face fucking coming in. Maybe he thought midway through the match they would correct themselves. He is so fucking <laughs> lost. We have heels violently fighting against the odds against these baby yes. faces. Yes. Then a baby face would come in. And by the way, this is a very important point that none of the walnut brains on Twitter even noted. It was the baby faces who kept throwing weapons into the ring. Yep. Yes. Yep. So Absolutely. not only did they have the advantage. Mm hmm. But every time they ran down and were outnumbering the heels, they were also throwing in fucking weapons. They were trying to cheat when they had the advantage. 
So these heels are at a disadvantage, and they're fighting for their lives. Crowd, by the way, is completely dead for the first 14 minutes of this match because it's such back word psychology. Then, of course, later in the show, in the men's war games, where they did the psychology right, the crowd's into it. I point this out, and these fucking morons are like, well, don't you know they sweeten the crowd? <laughs> Motherfucker, if they sweeten the crowd, where was the fucking crowd sweetening in the goddamn opener? That place was fucking dead! So, finally, they do a short deal where Io is trying to get into the ring. Yeah. But the heels are preventing her, okay? They're preventing her from getting in. So, all this leads to is, she jumps in! <laughs> and we have a fair fight. The baby faces have the advantage the entire fucking match. And then, for like two minutes... The heels have the advantage because EO is stuck outside. Beth is near tears. This yeah. is so unfair, this, <laughs> this advantage. This is, yes. I'm like, fuck off. Just, are you kidding me? And then, of course, finally they're all in the cage. And once they're all in the cage, then the match becomes good. Because, newsflash, you got eight women that can all work for the most part. Some better than others. But, I mean, at least six of the eight are very seasoned, good professional wrestlers. It finally comes down to all of them working. Everything's going along great. And then, spoiler everybody, Raquel grabs Io and gives her a choke slam through a table. No interference. Nobody runs in. No cheating. Raquel beats EO clean in the middle and the heels win the match. The heels were at a disadvantage the yep. entire time. Yes. The whole story is that these baby faces are all losers or they had people turn on them. They've been fucked six ways from Sunday. It's finally their chance at revenge. They go in with the fucking advantage and they get beaten clean by the heels. Then these fucking morons on Twitter are like, how did this hurt anybody? Obviously, sometimes the champion has to be pinned. How do you set up title matches? I'm like, well, first off, motherfucker, if you watch this show, you don't have to pin the champion to get a title match. Ask Jake Atlas. He got two fucking title matches, and he never beat anybody in their own fucking storyline. And in this case, you want to know who it hurt? Every one of these geek baby faces. They were fucking geeks going in. That was a storyline. It was their chance with the advantage to turn things around for themselves, and they fucking lost clean. This was an atrocity of booking. It was the worst booked NXT match I've ever seen in my life. Like, everybody mad at me about this. You should be fucking mad at them. All these women who could have gone in there and had a competently booked War Games match, and probably a four and a quarter star match like the odds makers thought. Instead, you fucking handicapped them by giving the baby faces the advantage, not doing anything to explain it, having the baby faces the advantage the whole time, and then they lose at the end. That's who you should be mad at. Not me, whoever booked that fucking match. What a you know, mess. They could have gotten around the, the man advantage with... Raquel Gonzalez, who is in second, by the way, easily could have injured one of the girls and left her in the middle of the ring or on the side of the ring, and, and they would just would have been at a disadvantage even though they were at an advantage, if that makes any sense at all. A fucking dome-headed hadrosaur could have come up with a better booking than what they did, Craig. You could. Vinny could. Every single person here on the Twitch feed, and trust me, we got some gimmicks in that Twitch chat. Everybody could have come up with a better idea than they came up with. A fucking disaster. They should be ashamed of themselves. Go ahead, Vinny. Well, let's break down all the reasons they should be ashamed of themselves. So as Dakota Kai and Ember to start, I thought it was okay for the five minutes they were in there. It was very intense. They're doing, like, dives into the cage. Like, like uh, uh, Dakota's standing against the cage, and Ember runs as fast as she can and dives as hard as she can through the ropes into the cage wall. I think you ladies have 20 minutes before everyone's in. Pace yourselves. I thought the now, first part was very choreographed, but that's just me. Well, that's, that's it was a lot of, very overly choreographed. That's a lot of NXT. 
I don't know what to tell you. So the point is, when the five-minute period ends, Dakota Kai is already winning fair and square. <laughs> When Shotzi Blackheart comes in to make it an unfair fight, so Shotzi comes in to screw Dakota, who is winning fair and square, and that's not enough. Shotzi has to stop and bring weapons into the ring. So Shotzi is now it's now Shotzi and uh, Shotzi and Ember armed against an unarmed Dakota, and the announcers are saying, "Oh, Dakota is trying to do her best to survive." I'm like, no, no, actually, Dakota is whipping their asses. <laughs> Apparently, the baby faces needed to be three on one to have a chance. Two on one is still not good enough. She's just over overwhelming them. The amazing thing about this is, if you just pretend the heels and baby faces are switched, then the psychology is perfect. Then Dakota really is the superior fighter in Ember Moon and fighting against overwhelming odds when Shotzi comes in. So they <laughs> I forgot about this. They finally take over. Right as it's time for Raquel Gonzalez to come in and make it a fair fight. And Raquel hits the ring. And Raquel's Andre the Giant from 1983. Absolutely. And she's beating up two of them. And they're trying to whip her in. And she's whipping both of them apart. And she's fighting them both off. They're trying to double team her. She's overwhelming them. What am I watching here? Now, one other problem. You're watching a babyface comeback by a giant heel. That's what you're watching. (laughs) One of the problems with both of these matches, actually, is that the three-minute intervals in between entrances are too long. Because after, like, two minutes of fighting, guys will just start to think, well, i got to make a comeback now, whether it's time for them to make a comeback in the story of the match or not. It should be two-minute intervals. That should be better that way. So th- this three-minute interval ends with Dakota doing a really cool dive so you will cheer for her and want her to win. Rhea Ripley comes in. Now it's three on two. Again, if you ignore how completely nonsensical and illogical this is, Rhea's comeback on Dakota looks fucking awesome. And there's double teams in the ring, in the other ring, and they're also awesome, but it's the baby faces. And then, in the middle of all this, the baby faces are whipping ass. Anything they want to do, they can do. It will work. Rhea decides, I shall use a hammer as a weapon. And she grabs a big ass hammer and starts clunking people with it. Yeah, a hammer. It looked like one of those things you could win at the carnival. You know, the blow-up kind. Yes. This is such a gimmick. So, Tony Storm comes out to make it three-on-three. At this point, I get a uh, text from my friend Sean, who is also watching at about the same time I was. Sean does not watch NXT more than every couple of months. He says something about how all these women are all wearing black. I have no idea who's on whose team. That's a strong point. Then Wade Barrett says... The advantage lay with Team Shotzi, although you wouldn't know it the way it has played out so far. They do a bunch more coordinated stuff. You can hear Ember counting to three to make sure everyone goes at the same time. So Io comes out, the last of the alleged baby faces to come into the cage. She also wants to start throwing weapons into the ring. She's getting ladder, chairs, kendo sticks, whatever. But they keep the door closed so she can't get in. And the story is now... That Io is too stupid and incompetent to even enter the match. Again, baby face. Eventually the door opens and there's her chance. But instead of getting in to go help her friends, she just keeps throwing plunder into the ring. And then she gets beat up without even getting getting into the cage. Candace is the last person in. Per the rules at this point. Well, actually, hold that thought. Candace is the last person to enter. She and Io are on the floor. But Indy Hartwell is there to level Io from behind with a chain or whatever. So they lock EO outside the cage. They lock the door with a chain, lock the chain, and then Indy drops the key in her cleavage. And so the referees won't touch her and get it. So it's advantage. Yes, Chris. I was going to say, there was three referees there. Indy comes out, and she's in a neck brace. And they couldn't wrestle the key away from her. No. no. Anyway. So now it is four heels. Against three baby faces inside the cage. They did murder For Shotzi. Two minutes. <laughs> they murder Shotzi so that she is dead. They try to pin her, but the ref says, no, 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 the match hasn't started yet. So now everyone is stupid. Because the heels by their plan cannot win. Also, <laughs> poor Shotzi, as I said, was murdered to death. And not letting her be pinned is not doing her any favors. So Eo climbs up on top of the cage. She's got a trash can with her. There's a big smile, drops the trash can over her head, and jumps off like it's a big cartoon. 
So at, at this point, finally, everyone's in the ring. Insanity ensues. Uh, there's stuff onto chairs. There is stuff through ladders. There's stuff blocked with chairs. Rhea gets backdropped into the cage as a free fall. I screamed. The big finish is, yes, EO has... Or excuse me, Rhea, uh, no, Raquel, has EO up in the ropes. Does her one arm power bomb through a ladder. And then drags her out of the rubble and pins her. Yeah. You know, a couple of things before we get into it. So, when EO dove off the cage with a fucking trash can over her head... Like, it was cool, but as we'll get to later, Pat McAfee also does a dive off the stage, yes. and it was a 7-10 split. He hit maybe a guy, and he smashed and burned on the ground. If that would have happened to Io Shirai with that trash can overhead, she would be dead. Now, she's not dead, but she also was almost dead when the trash can somehow ended up over her again, and then, I can't remember who it was, but Dakota somebody... Dakota did a foot Dakota. stomp. Yeah, Dakota yes. does like a foot stomp. And she's supposed to pull her out of the can to pin her, but she's stuck in the can. Yeah, yes. legit stuck in there. So I don't know what happened. She wasn't badly hurt, but she was hurt at that spot because they got her, they got the camera off of her. So fast, by the way, that the referee starts counting and they cut away and nobody knows how she got out of it. Mm -hmm. They're like, I guess she kicked out. I think someone actually broke it up, but nobody knew because they cut away. Then they bring the doctor over to check on EO. And she kept wrestling, so I guess it wasn't too serious. But then, in the weirdest thing I ever saw, Candice is on the ground, and Shotzi sets a ladder up, and Shotzi's going to jump off the ladder and squish Candice, okay? So Candice reaches over, and she grabs a chair, and she puts a chair on herself. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so... Was someone supposed to put a chair on her and they forgot? Maybe. Are we supposed to believe that this was a plan that she put the chair on herself? Because to me, if you have the wherewithal to put a chair on yourself, why don't you fucking move out of the way so the person doesn't land on you in the chair? And worse, Shotzi comes off and squishes her and I believe broke Candace's arm. Oh. Mm. For I'm what? Good. Don't know. It led to nothing. It led to nothing, but Candace now has to go to the emergency room, apparently in the middle of a pandemic, because she broke her arm. That, that sucks. fucking sucks. And then we add the finish, and the heels go over clean. The baby faces look like geeks. I felt bad for every woman yep. in this match. Yes. None of this was their fault. You know whose fault this was? This was a man's fault, because I'm pretty <laughs> sure a man booked this match. Sure. And all the women suffered because of whoever booked this match. Should be disgusted the, with themselves. The only thing we did miss is after months of toil in the garage, Shotzi debuted her new tank tonight. And it we talked shot, about it. And it no, we didn't. Yeah, Vinny I mean, mentioned it. And it yeah. shot a nerf pellet or something. I don't know. I didn't see that part. I was skipping <laughs> through it, but I saw it. That I, hey, the tank itself is a huge improvement over her last tank. Sure. That may be the most positive thing to come out of this match. It is a better tank. I'll give him that. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.